her skin just feels so familiar, right? Like it's something that's just always been there. It may interest you to know that 28 days ago, none of the skin that you currently have was there. Your skin is constantly sloughing off and falling down to the ground. Uh, the topmost layer of your skin is actually all dead. And it's constantly falling off. And sometimes it falls off in bigger chunks. It's most noticeable in your hair. You can sometimes find it resting in your hair or on your shoulders. We call that dead skin dandruff. Fun fact, the dust in your house is actually a combination of your skin, your hair, and other little fibers. Not just yours, but your family's as well. So when you're sitting in your living room and you see that beam of sunlight uh, coming in through the, through the window and you see all of that dust floating in the air, remember that you're getting a nice breath of your family's skin into your lungs. You want some wacky numbers? Man, do I love wacky numbers. Here's a good one. There are about 37 trillion cells in the average adult. There are 7 billion humans on the planet. Let's do some fun math. If you were to total up all of the human cells on the planet, assuming with the, the small assumption that all of the uh, 7 billion humans are all adults and all the same size, um, some are smaller, some are bigger, but let's make that a little assumption because numbers are fun. If you were to look at the 37 trillion cells and multiply that by the 7 billion humans, you would have 252 sextillion human cells on the planet. Wow! Even wackier numbers you ask? You got it. There are another group of organisms on this planet called prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are the bacteria. They're single-celled organisms like that. There are about five million trillion trillion prokaryotes on this planet from our best estimates. Wow, that is five with 30 zeros behind it. Now, if each one of those was the width of a human hair, still pretty tiny, right? If you were to stack every single one of those little guys on top of each other, again, assuming they're the width of a human hair, they would be a bedazzling 75 quintillion meters tall, or about 79,000 light years. How did we get so many cells on this planet? Where did they all come from? Those are crazy numbers. To think about humans, prokaryotes, any of that, these are massive numbers. How do we get so many? Let's talk cell division. Let's talk about how they're actually getting to those numbers. Um, every single cell has a pre-programmed pre cell death. There's a time that it's going to die. Over the course of its life, it will gather all the materials required to uh, reproduce itself. Um, when it comes time to replicate, um, the cell will begin one of two possible processes. Let's start with the majority of cell divisions, mitosis. Mitosis is the type of cell division that plants and animals go through to produce body cells. That's the majority of the cells in your body. So like on your hand, your skin cells, the muscle cells, the bone cells, the nerve cells, um, everything that makes up your hand, these are all produced. All of these cells, millions of cells, are all produced through the process of mitosis. What mitosis is, is where, one, where you have one parent cell uh, growing and dividing uh, into two identical daughter cells. Um, so when a skin cell wants to replicate itself, it's actually the base most layer of your skin that does the replication. Again, like I mentioned, the, the topmost layer of your skin is dead. It's the, the skin on the very bottom that <clears throat> does the replication. They're the ones that replace them and then that pushes up the skin layers constantly until they get to the top and once they get to the top they eventually die and slough off and uh, you constantly have this ever regenerating skin cells coming up from underneath. Um, a third degree burn is when you actually damage those cells when the burn gets all the way down to that base layer of skin 
um, and destroys those cells. If they're gone, there's nothing left to replicate. So um, <clears throat> when a skin cell wants to replicate itself, at the uh, it needs to grow until it's a, a fully grown cell. And after a certain amount of time living as an adult cell, it doesn't start dividing right away, but after a certain amount of time, it'll eventually undergo cell division, um, where, again, it pinches off in the middle and separates into two daughter cells. Um, so it needs to have all of its DNA replicated. That new cell also has to have all of the DNA required to make a new cell itself. Eventually it's going to need to follow the same, uh, uh, those cells are going to need to follow the same pattern as the, the parent cell. They'll eventually need to divide and give birth to a, a new cell. Um, so um, all their DNA needs to be copied. Now, remember that DNA is in a whole bunch of strings. Particularly with human DNA, we've got uh, each human cell has 46 strands of DNA. Um, remember, these are, these are huge, like, strings. Have you ever tried pulling out even uh, just two strings, your earbuds, from your backpack, and they're all in a big tangled mess? Why doesn't that happen inside of the cell? Why don't you end up with this huge, tangled, jumbly, garbagey mess of DNA inside? How does it stay organized? How does it stay separate into uh, separate cells? Just like you can do with your earbuds, the, the key to making sure they never tangle themselves up is to purposefully tangle them in a certain way. If you tie a little knot in your earbuds, they won't get tangled. So, how does your chromosomes avoid being um, all tangled up with each other? They do a very similar thing. They tie a knot in themselves, a very specific one. So kind of like with a string or with anything else, when you start twisting it, um, eventually, after enough twists, you start getting a secondary twisting. Right there, you can see it's starting to um, twist upon itself. So it's run out of twisting space, so it starts um, twisting upon itself and you end up with this secondary twisting. And if you keep twisting it, it will eventually create a third, a tertiary, a third set of twisting. Um, and it's tied itself up in a nice neat little knot like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. That is almost exactly how chromosomes tie themselves up. They wrap themselves up around special proteins um, and they make it in a nice orderly fashion. Now this is a, a tight little ball and remember um, to undo that is just a matter of unraveling it and bam you're back to the full thing. That's uh, the that's really efficient. That's so much better than untying the knots uh, that you get when you pull when you pull your uh, headphones out of your backpack. You have to sit there untying all those knots until you get it undone. Well, this is an extremely simple knot, a, an extremely simple way of tying up your DNA so that uh, when your cell wants to go replicate it, um, the process is nice and simple. So, after each of the chromosomes have tied themselves up in the center of the cell, uh, the next step that happens is that each of these chromosomes are duplicated. Remember that the DNA needs to be copied. So that's the second step here. Um, each of the chromosomes, each of the four here, are duplicated. They kind of uh, recopy themselves, but they stay connected in the center. Um, this has some interesting points that you'll learn uh, later on when you talk more about meiosis. But for now, let's just imagine it as a little X. Um, so these are two copies of the exact same chromosome. And notice that each chromosome has a copy of itself. The next thing that happens is that all of the chromosomes line up in the center of the cell. Uh, those chromosomes are then pulled by little organelles in uh, side of the cell, pulls each of these chromosomes in half and pulls 
exactly half of each chromosome to either end of the cell. And that's the next step of mitosis. Each of the halves are dragged to either end of the cell, and then the cell starts pinching off in the center. Notice that this step, uh, each of the protocells, each of the beginnings of those cells, uh, have exactly four copies of the chromosomes. They came from the parents, from these duplicates. After this, the cell finishes pinching off, and you're left with two daughter cells that have the exact same setup as the original cell. From one cell into two duplicate cells, and they have the exact same genetic makeup. That is mitosis. Remember that a sperm cell and an egg cell must both carry half of the DNA required to produce a new human. When sperm meets egg and the two of them fuse their DNA, you have the start of an offspring, a baby. So how does a sperm or egg get to half the DNA? That is accomplished during cell division, but a special kind of cell division, the other one that we need to talk about, meiosis. Meiosis is a little bit more complicated than mitosis. Uh, I'll walk you through it though, step by step. So meiosis is very similar to my mitosis and how it starts. There is a parent cell. Uh, let's imagine this is a human cell, but uh, let's imagine humans only have eight chromosomes rather than the 46 that they actually have to make it more simple. So if we had eight starting chromosomes, the first step is still the same. The cell will uh, uh, the cell will duplicate all of the chromosomes inside the cell so that now each of the original chromosomes are paired up. They're, they're duplicated. Now, after the chromosomes thicken, just like with uh, mitosis, all those chromosomes are going to go to the center of the cell. But here's a slight difference. The chromosome pairs, remember you get one from mom, one from dad, one from mom, one from dad for each chromosome. Those pairs, those duplicated pairs, they line up in the center. So we've got one set on one side and one set on the other. This is a little different from mitosis. After they've lined up like that, it's the pairs that are pulled apart. So remember with mitosis, the duplicates are ripped in half uh, and brought to either end of the cell. It's the full pairs that are split apart. So instead of having one of each from mom and dad, notice that each of the cells are only going to have one of the, uh, each copy instead of both. There's the halving event right there. That's how the chromosomes are split in half. So when these chromosomes get pulled to either end of the cell, the cell will divide and you end up with the first division of meiosis. Notice a key difference here that each of these two cells only have four copies, four of the chromosomes. These are duplicated, but they only have four, whereas the parent originally had eight. Again, this first division in meiosis is where we get the halving of chromosomes that's necessary for a sperm or an egg to have half the number of chromosomes as the parent. Again, they each need to have half so that when the sperm meets egg, you have a whole baby again. So after this first division of meiosis, these chromosomes, they're still duplicated. They still need to be separated. So there's another division in meiosis. So the next step is that just like with mitosis, again, the chromosomes will line up in the center of the cell and they will be pulled apart. But this time, the duplicates are pulled apart. Rather than the pairs, the full pairs being pulled apart, it's the duplicates that get pulled apart. So they get fully separated. This is the second division in meiosis. You end up with four daughter cells, though. Instead of having two daughter cells, like with mitosis, meiosis gives you four daughter cells. Each of the daughter cells 
has exactly half of the chromosomes as the parent. Notice this was the original parent cell. Each one only has two from dad, two from mom. Two from dad, two from mom. It's the case for all of these. So when you pass on your genetics to a baby, you are providing half of your genetics from mom, half of your genetics from dad into your babies, into the sperm or egg cells that you create. This is meiosis. So uh, when mitosis uh, is done, mitosis is done by ordinary body cells. That's your skin, muscle, um, fat cells, bone cells, all of those is uh, all of the cell division for those cells is done through mitosis. The only cells in plants and animals that undergo meiosis are just the sex cells, just the gametes. So for animals, that is your sperm and egg. For plants, that is your ova and pollen. Those are your sex cells for plants and animals. Um, that is where meiosis happens. And again, that's a necessary part of creating a sperm or an egg because you need to half the DNA first so that when sperm meets egg, they're both carrying half and they create one whole baby. So let's summarize. Mitosis is the process of creating uh, body cells. They are exact duplicates of each other. Uh, in the case of humans, uh, each of your human cells have 46 chromosomes in them. Every single one of those cells, when they undergo mitosis, uh, creates an exact duplicate with exactly 46 chromosomes, with the exact same ones. With meiosis, that is just done in the sex cells. If you're a male, that is when you're producing sperm. If you're a female, that's when you're producing eggs. Um, meiosis has two cell divisions in effort to half the number of chromosomes. So when a sperm or an egg is created, they have half of the number of chromosomes as the parent does. That's all for today. Mitosis, meiosis. Thanks for watching. See you next time.